Recently there's been a lot of excitement because Stephen Hawking has claimed he's solved the information paradox. So the, the black hole information paradox, it's sort of a puzzle that's been around for, for some time now. And it it's kind of boils down to the fact that uh, uh, information is lost in a black hole. And that violates everything that you, uh, you think you, you believe from, from quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics tells you that this, essentially what goes in must come out, that physics is what we call unitary. So information shouldn't be lost in a system. So, so for example, why, why would information be lost in a black hole? Why do, why do people believe this? Well, take a, take a black hole and throw something in it. So what could you throw in it? Well, you could throw Gary Neville in it. Now, what happens? Well, all that happens when the, eventually the black hole will, its mass will increase a little bit as a result of Gary being thrown in. Its charge might change if Gary carried charge. If he carried angular momentum, its angular momentum might change, but nothing else. That's it. So where did all the information go about his, his, you know, his face, his, his, his tattoos, and all this? Where did all that go? Okay, it's just the same black hole. So I could have also throw in Donald Trump, okay, instead, right? And I might end up with exactly a very different information. For example, you know, he's got funny hair, he's got obnoxious personality, all, all these things. I could throw him in, but I end up with the same black hole. Well, what I'm saying is, so you, you then say, okay, can I extract the information back? So a black hole will eventually radiate. It will eventually give off a type of radiation called Hawking radiation. Right? Now this is what you get when you apply quantum mechanics to the event horizon of a black hole. You, it gives off this Hawking radiation. So you might ask, can I extract that information about whether it was Gary I threw into the black hole or, or Donald Trump from the Hawking radiation? And naively you think, well, absolutely no. Because the object that it came from only knows about mass, charge and angular momentum. It's, well, there's, there's a saying that black holes have no hair, okay, that they all, only information they contain are this mass charge and angular momentum. And so the information seems to have become lost. Tony, why is this exclusive to black holes though? I mean, if those two people died and decomposed in the ground, wouldn't that information also be lost? No, 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 that, that information wouldn't be lost there. So they decompose in the ground, but you could extract that information, you could, you know, the, from the, the whatever remains were left, you could work back and work out. You know, might be difficult, but you could do it in principle. With a black hole, all the calculations that Hawking did pointed to the suggestion that this couldn't happen. Okay, that the information is truly lost, and that completely seems to violate one of the things you hold sacred about quantum mechanics. So it's a huge, it was a huge issue. So. For years, people have been trying to resolve this, and there's various ideas put forward. Maybe the black hole doesn't completely evaporate away, okay, and it's left with some remnant, which contains a lot of information, contains all that information about how the black hole was formed, right? But, but that doesn't quite work either, because if you throw one of these black hole remnants into a black hole, into another black hole, you violate things like the second law of thermodynamics. It, it just doesn't quite work. There's, there's other proposals that, that, that uh, people have put forward, for example, baby universes, that this is one thing that Hawking liked, that on the other side of the black hole there's a baby universe and somehow the information leaks into there. Again, that's based on ideas which didn't just quite pan out. In the mid-90s, people realised that actually black holes probably don't lose information because something came along called the holographic principle. But still, people haven't understood how it really is, where the information, where is it still? It's still not fully understood until these recent claims by Hawking and his, his collaborators. There isn't a paper out yet about this, so I'm kind of winging it a little bit. <laughs> um, there have been some seminars, um, particularly by Hawking in, in Stockholm, but that was only a short nine minute seminar. He, one of his collaborators, Malcolm Perry, been given talks about this. Also Andy Strominger, who's the other collaborator. You sometimes give talks about stuff that's not quite completed yet. I've done it before as well, <laughs> but maybe not something as spectacular as this, but anyway. But, but so, so what, they're, what they're saying is, is, is really quite interesting, at least what I'm trying to glean from, from what they're saying. As I said, all the details aren't out yet. But it turns out, you know, we've seen black holes have no hair, but actually it turns out they seem to have a lot more they're able to contain a lot more information than we previously realised. They have an infinite amount of hair. <laughs> so the black hole has, has no hair, it's just a statement. All right, black holes don't know about Donald Trump's, Donald Trump's hair, right? Okay, so they don't know about that hair. So... Uh, why, why did, when they were coming up with the saying, why did they choose hair for black holes? I don't know, you'd have to... I don't know, I guess it's sort of, because they're very smooth objects, I think that's the idea. But now they do have hair. Well, it seems so, so, I mean, this is non, completely non-trivial trivial thing, and it all goes back to something that um, 
guys called Bondi, Metzner and Sachs did. They were, they were thinking about the effects of gravitational radiation and um, things like that. And they discovered that there was actually a much larger class of symmetries called the BMS symmetries. And in particular, they included something called super translations. And there's an infinite amount of these things. Okay? Now, what Hawking realized was that these things also exist on a black hole event horizon. And so that is where the information is being stored. So when something falls into the black hole event horizon, it causes a super translation, changes the charge there, and in principle you can store an infinite, there's an infinite amount of possible charges. And this seems to be where the information is going. So when Gary Neville falls into a black hole, it changes the, one of these, let's call it a, a BMS charge, that's what it's called. It changes one of these BMS charges on the horizon. And then, what, due to a calculation that's, that a guy called Polchinski did, Hawking's suggesting that actually this can now affect the stuff that's getting emitted. So when the, when the black hole starts to radiate, this change in the BMS charge, this super translation, can, uh, can affect the time at which the photon, say, if something's emitted from the, from the black hole. And so that information is now gets stored in the sort of times and slight delays in the times that stuff's getting emitted. Now, he, he's also saying that it's, it's completely scrambled. The information is there, but it's chaotic. So for all practical purposes, you, you would never really be able to extract the information, but the claim is, is actually it is there. So it's not lost, it's just very hard to get. So it's like anything that goes into a black hole at the event horizon, it has like a final selfie. Yeah. But the kinda... selfie is really hard to see and read back. That's one way of putting it, yeah, yeah, BMS selfie, yeah, yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, super selfie, because these are super translations. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's kind of it's a nice way of putting it. I like that. And what these super translations are, so if you imagine this, this surface, this, this future null infinity, it's a light-like surface. You have to be travelling at the speed of light to sit on it, and it's in the far future.